Scott? Just right. Chad, obviously, start with your I mean, your uh, running backs. I mean, what would you ask of them this summer? What did they accomplish? Did you think? Well, I knew we was going to uh, put them guys in position to play a lot more than they played last year. So this summer, they are, the singular focus this summer was to be able to learn all the form formations so they can line up across the formation when we got two of them in the game. Obviously, when it's one in the game, it's fairly easy. But when we got two of them in the game, one is, you know, one and one, we ask them to play across the formation. I ask them to be able to learn the formation so they can get lined up. Mm -hmm. Did they accomplish that well, did you think? Thus far, uh, yeah, yesterday I thought we, were, uh, we weren't as crisp. Uh, we, we ended up in the right spot. We weren't urgent getting there the first time. And so that was the uh, – one of the uh, focuses today was for those guys to be able to go get in line like they would if they were in the backfield by themselves. So uh, today, yesterday, not as not as great. Uh, today, we were better. Ask Jordan, I'll ask you, what point do you have to start making uh, decisions? I know you're not at that point yet, right. but the sooner the better, I'm guessing. Absolutely, man. The sooner the better, no question. Um, I, I don't want to put a time limit on it, but definitely the sooner the better. I mean, we're you know we constantly uh, you know emphasize those guys. They're getting, being evaluated absolutely every single day. We're doing a two spot deal right now, so guys can get reps and and you know they can even prove that they're ready to play or either now or maybe not as not early, not so so much early on, maybe later. But uh, definitely sooner than later, we we got to be able to uh, make a decision and see who can help us right now. What about other positions on the offense? Obviously, you've got quarterback. That's an issue. Yep. What about other areas? When do those things start making, you know, those decisions start happening? Well, we got some young talent. So, uh, in particular, uh, like the slot position, for example, you know, you got a got a guy, Jeremiah Aaron, has got some experience, has made some plays, and you got a young, talented, uh, you know, freshman riding the Gallagher, had a phenomenal day today, he made some tough, you know, competitive catches. You got a you got a young, talented kid in Jaheim White who's uh, shown the ability on uh, spring ball. He's really shown the ability throughout the summer and thus far in these two days to be able to flex out and pretty special with the ball in his hands. So, you know, guys like that, if we're putting those guys in position to see if they can help us right now. You know, that's a position that's a competitive position, even in the running back spot right now. We got a, it's a, it's a deep group, and they got they all got unique running styles, and you know, we got to be able to see who can do what and who can you know, do what consistently as well. And then also on the outside receiver, we got some uh, got some talented guys too that we need to be stretched to field. We got some newcomers, we got experience, but not a lot of playing experience here. You know, behind the guys that we had last year, uh, that's that's departed right now. So. A lot of key positions that we got outside that, that we need a bit to figure out who can help us and who can play and make some plays. And I guess O-line, you're looking at maybe six, seven, eight, that type of deal there, who yep. are those guys going to be? Absolutely. And that's the biggest thing, the six, seven, eight. Obviously, we're from the left tackle to the right tackle. And I told them guys to stay. That's the nucleus of our offense attack is those guys right there. So from that left tackle to the right tackle, we solidified. But you're right, you know, to figure out who can be six, seven, and eight guy for us down the line. You mentioned Jaheim White. Are you playing him more at slot than running back? or? Uh, both right now. Mm -hmm. He's a kid that he. I mean, we got to get the ball in his hands. Uh, and obviously, you know, we're not uh, being smart about it. We're seeing how much he can carry uh, in terms of how much he can pick up on right now. And that's the beauty of having a two spot. It gives a lot of reps, be able to show us what he can handle. Um, and, and it's good for him. One thing that he can't handle when the ball's in his hands, he's special. So we will. We won't ask a lot of them because we. Uh, he, he's, he's talented, and obviously. We got a guy that talented. The worst thing we could do was make him play a whole lot slower than what he is, and he's fast, so we're not going to do that. How's his ball skills? Great ball skills. Okay, so he got great ball skills. That, that leads the lens the the slot maybe a little yep. bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. great ball skills, and like I said, these rep, these reps are really really beneficial for him. And so, uh, like I said, we want uh, we we knew he was fast. We knew he was special with the ball in his hands, so we want him to continue to be fast. And so we can't put a lot on this plate to force him to go out there and think. And thus far, we've done a good job of that. So. He got to keep taking care of his body and be available for us. You know, this league has had some little backs like that that have been pretty special. They yeah. have a couple of Kansas State over the years. Ain't no doubt. Well, I'm like a fly on the wall. You know, I like to overhear them defensive guys talking. You know, just yeah. just overhearing them guys talk. They can't find him. Uh, yeah. He, he hard, he hard to find. You can't find him. And uh, obviously, talk about pad level, right? Well, he right. got it naturally, right? <laughs> and so, uh, and he's fast. And he sees it. He sees it really well. Got phenomenal vision. So, uh, excited about what he can do with the ball in his hands. Take all those little guys and give them, what, 21, 22, 23, and give them the same type of numbers? Ain't, say, no, doubt. Who are these guys? Ain't no doubt. Yeah. A couple of the young backs, sort of opposite ends of the size spectrum, uh, mm -hmm. DJ Oliver and then Judah Price. What, what have you seen from them? It's yeah, DJ show. Oliver, man, he's a low. Uh, you know, I tell him and CJ Donaldson, man, they're the worst. They're the, when, they're, when defensive guys can see the four and the 20, which is what DJ Oliver is wearing, they got to make business decisions. 
you know, and there was some there was some big guys, and you know, and with their momentum going forward, you know, I was telling you, I mean, you you gonna you're an efficient runner naturally, four yards, just going running north, vertical mentality, and so DJs look really good thus far. It's phenomenal because when we first got here, they they weren't sure at least his teammates what position he played. They know what he is now. He can run the football. He he can run the ball. And then Judah's been really he's done really uh, good thus far as well. I've been uh, pleasant, pleasantly surprised. Not in terms, he just hadn't been here as long. And for uh, he's got some reps, and he's picking up on the offense pretty good. I'm excited about him. He's competitive. Talking about this slot, you mentioned using maybe a bigger guy there. I think you mentioned Yeah. What does size get you in this slot? The ability to be able to block on the perimeter big time. You know, obviously play some teams where that, uh, you know, that nickel position they call spear and or whatnot is a, sometimes a, a thicker body. And, you know, having the, uh, the ability to you know, be able to put a guy there, like a guy like Noah Massey that's, you know, has good size, but also has good ball skills as well. You know, doesn't allow us to be one dimensional. He can run routes and catch the ball as well, but also be able to be effective in the, uh, in the run game. But that's, that's huge for us to have a guy like Massey. Well, here's the thing, uh, I mean, and I told his offense coaches this, we got to do a phenomenal job as coaches being clear. You know, we, we got to provide clarity for those guys. So there is absolutely no gray area. And th those guys are confident in, in what they're being taught to do and that they can go out there and have the confidence and the courage to be able to take risks and go play football. You know, so we got to do a phenomenal job as coaches being clear in our coaching and our teaching. So those guys, they know exactly what to do. And at that point, they either do or they don't. It's a production-based business. And I told those guys that, uh, you know, uh, day one. But I've always preached this even uh, to the back. So, uh, you know, we don't, we don't favor seniority. We favor production. You know, it, it's about producing when, the, when your number's called, producing away from the football. And so we, we grade these guys on a, on a production base uh, every single day. And we got to be consistent with that and then tell these guys the truth. And it's good, you know, when you, uh, when you tell the guy the truth and you keep it clear, they're able to see it. They can regurgitate it to you right away on the football field. You know, like, for example, Jay Lanson uh, had him, you know, uh, he's had a phenomenal two days as well. And, you know, he had a hiccup on a particular play on the, uh, on a defensive field today, and he came to me immediately and was able to tell me. So when, I'm, when you're keeping the uh, you're teaching clear and those guys know exactly what to do, not only do they, have, they know, you know, what's the issue, but they know the answers to it and they can get it fixed right away. So that's the, uh, the best answer I can give you is that we got, as coaches, we've been doing a great job of keeping uh, the teaching clear so it's no gray. And they either go out there and they either do it, they don't. And we grade them on a production every day. Uh, more so, uh, we, first of all, I got to be on the football field. I'm an energy guy. I got to be down. I don't know if you guys are in the football field. I kind of get in the zone. I just be, uh, kind of out of, out of there. But, uh, I do, uh, more so just being able to, you know, really about the same. I'm going to give in game adjustments in the run game. You know, I'm, I, you know, I see the run game really well in terms of how we game plan it, how we, you know, how we put the guys in position to call whatever plays we need to call. So as far as that, you know, I'll, that stuff will remain the same. So the biggest change for the NFC is the, the midweek? Yeah, more so the, uh, the organization all behind it, putting the ideas to the pad, that, you know, you know, try to put a – so Coach Brown can go out there and be able to call the game, you know. You know, in, in a, I'm saying a cool, calm, and collective uh, pace. But uh, more so just the organization behind putting the ideas to the pad and uh, helping him, you know, put guys in the best position to be successful and make plays so he can go out there and call it at ease on Saturdays. You mentioned Thursday's the big day where you guys kind of go through and map out your plan. You go through the yeah. analytics, the data, and all that. Do you literally go through a game? Do you kind of mock that out and go through that and say, okay, this is what we're going to do in first in this situation or second in this situation? Do you plot your way down and do that, or is it just basically based off analytics and data? Well, everybody's different. Uh, you do it both. You do you do you do it both ways. Uh, you look at all the games. We look at uh, you know everybody kind of game plan break it down differently. Right. Uh, you look, you always look at the analytics toward the end of the week. Uh, you know what I mean, and and see how you would make decisions or whatnot, and and, those, and whatever situation that may come up during the game. But uh, you really just kind of everybody does it different. You got guys that you know may just look at you know cut ups of certain games and 
you know, develop a feel for that. I'm a little bit different. You know, I like to be able to look at games and get a feel for, you know, how defenses attack and, you know, what teams do to hurt them and what's the answer to stop them and, and then go to the cut-ups and, and have ideas in that regard. So you, I mean, if you have a third and fourth situation in a certain area of the field, I mean, the analytics are going to tell you what, what that defense is going to do, I guess. Right. Exactly. So that, that tells you what, the, what, what defense what is going to do, right? And then, and then they may tell you, you know, what's best to do to attack them to right. be successful. Right. You know, and, you know, in that, in that particular situation during the game, you got to be able to make a decision whether you listen to analytics or you go with what you saw on family throughout the week, right? It. Sometimes it's tough. Yeah. In my mind, the way I am, I like to take risks. I like to trust my, uh, you know, my game plan and all the things that I uh, studied throughout the week and trust my instinct sometimes and take some risks. We talented enough to do that, so that's my mindset. Right. Yeah, different guys. Yeah, how do you yeah. come about that? Figure those two right guys, and, and how is that different from a guy like Carter or Hunt? Right. Well, we needed a guy with speed. We, we we needed somebody to be able to stretch the football field. Lost that in uh, Sam James, obviously, last year. So we needed a guy to be able to stretch the field vertically, and so. You know, that was uh, E.J. Horton's uh, deal. And Massey, we needed a, a, a bigger body in the inside, outside of just a – I know we got Traylon Davis and uh, Cole Taylor, but uh, needed more just like, like a true hybrid kind of guy that can flex out and be like a, you know, athletic slot. It can be a mismatch in, uh, in a route game and also like a, you know, hybrid kind of guy that can be able to go block on the perimeter. So that was uh, the thought process behind being able to acquire both of those guys. And, Thus far throughout camp, the two spot is, it gives us a chance to be able to see exactly what it is they can do or cannot do to uh, to help us moving forward. No, this isn't a question you'll answer publicly, but amongst your coaches, when you evaluate receivers, do you ask yourself which guys can we count on on third down? Who are the guys that are going to make the, the the catches and the plays that we need? Is that something that's important to you guys when you talk about that? Absolutely, and then, and then we'll be able to see that in uh. You know, as we get, you know, as we get in pass, uh, in particular, like in the earlier part of the camp with the scrimmages and when we do situational play, that's exactly what we're trying to evaluate. Who can make those particular uh, plays in those situational periods? When we get to, you know, scrimmage situation and we're going, this is a third down period and third and medium, third and long. And we put these guys in position to make these plays. We're, we're evaluating who can make those plays and who can do it consistently. Absolutely. You don't, you don't know that right now. You've got you such a – Right, we don't know that right now because yeah. obviously just started, and that's important for the quarterbacks to be able to know that as well. You know, the quarterbacks got to have a, a level of comfortability, knowing them third and long or whatnot where they're going with the ball. It's going to be times with the quarterbacks we have uh, that we may call a certain play, but heck, they may just, you know, know that this particular receiver is, is a sure-handed receiver, and I'm gonna take a shot and give my best my best player a chance to make a play in a situational play, which I absolutely love. I'm, I'm I've always been a big advocate of, in situational play, where the game will lie in the game into the half. You know, those red zone, third and long, you know, it, it ain't the play, it's the player. We got to put the ball in the hands of the best player. And so when we get into those situations, we're evaluating that. And that's, you know, that's just good for, for us, but also for those quarterbacks as well. How does um, Tony Leaving kind of shake up the running back split? Well, I don't even want to speak on him. Uh, I mean, he's a great player. For, he's a great player for us and graduated and whatnot. But he was just, you know, he was, old, he was the older guy in the room. He was, you know, he was the leader in the room. Uh, did a phenomenal job, phenomenal work ethic. But, uh, you know, we got we got a talent, we got a talented group. You know, we always, you know, every year I tell them guys, we always trying to go out and, you know, recruit a guy to come in and replace him, man. And the unique thing I love about our group, we got a we got a great group. It's a competitive group. You know, we got a guy that goes out and makes a play. That the other guys, they done, they done soak. They want to go make that same play. And I'm pretty sure you guys, see, you've seen it on, on film and in the games, man. They the bi biggest cheerleader. They all root for each other. So it's a competitive room. And and, and the guys have done a great job this summer stepping up and uh, being leaders for us. Right now, JJ's uh, the oldest guy in the room. And he's done a great job uh, being a leader. And so, uh, you know, I'm excited about what we got you know, moving forward with those guys in there. Chad, how does education have to do with your backs? And 
what you're going to do differently with the offense this year. And we have got a lot more tight ends. Mm-hmm. Soon we're going to see some more of that. Right. Running with them on the field mm-hmm. is different than just out of a one back, one tight kind of thing. Yeah. Is, is that part of this you know, educational process that you've got to learn to? And do you have one or two guys maybe that take more naturally to that? Yeah, we do. And we got to be honest with the guys. You know, you got guys like, uh, you got, for example, uh, like CJ was a tight end, right? So, you know, he's played that his whole life. He's been a second year playing running back. So, you know, he's a natural guy that will be able to, you know, play in multiple positions across formation. Jaheen White's a, you know, very talented guy, got great ball skills. He's a guy as well as Jalen Anderson. You could classify him as an athlete coming out of high school. And then those will be the three guys that will, uh, you know, put in position to play across the formation. So, got to spend a lot more time. Uh, you know, they got to do a phenomenal job outside of the meeting time, required time, which they have, they have done thus far. And in the summertime, coming in and studying a extra, little, little more extra so they can learn, you know, some different things as far as coverage that they're typically not accustomed to doing. So they can't be in a position to do that. And a lot of it, again, just telling those guys the truth. Everybody's not going to be able to do that. DJ Oliver can say, Coach, man, I catch that ball too. But listen, y'all ain't looking for us to go flesh DJ Oliver out in the slot at 245 pounds. You know, so you got to be honest with those guys. They ain't saying you can't do it. And I told them guys this the other day that you got to be great at what you are. I'm not saying that you can't work on your weaknesses, but whatever it is you great at, you got to be great at that. Jaheen White, he's a make you miss guy. You got to be great at making people miss. I ain't saying you can't break tackles, but you got to do that. You know, CJ. You break tackles, get downhill, get downhill, be great at that. So you got to be honest with those guys, not saying they can't do those things. So right now, those three guys we'll have playing across formation. And then the other guys will be the guys that would, you know, really kind of just stick to playing in, in the backfield. They'll catch the ball out of the backfield, but we're not going to ask them to go, you know, and flex out and do some things. So we got to be smart about what we're doing. But the biggest thing is just be to tell those guys the truth on the front end. So there's no surprises in that, in that kind of deal. Running behind, say, tight ends or other people with blockers. That's different than just running behind five offensive linemen. I assume different guys have different abilities and yeah. their way to read and react to those things. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing I love about it, uh, the tight ends we got, I like to call them hybrids. You know, them, them tight ends, just old school guys, put the hand on the ground and just come down and block a mash. I like to call the guys hybrids. They got the ability to be able to do both. Traylon Davis and uh, Cole Taylor showing the ability to be able to block in line, be able to block uh, with the, with, on, in a hip position, we call it. And also from those same position, be able to go run routes. And so just that ability to be able to not be predictable. I think that's our biggest thing, man. We, we, we got to be unpredictable in that sense. So those guys having that flexibility to be, you know, uh, multidimensional gives us a, a greater presence. And it takes a lot of pressure off of us, as well as those quarterbacks having the ability to be able to run. So I'm excited about, uh, you know, the possibilities in his offense and the things we can do. We got to do a great job as coaches, like I said, being clear and our, and our teaching and keeping it simple. So those guys with the natural ability they got, speed, hands, they can go out and have the confidence and the courage to go take risks and make plays for us. Does that help predictability go to your personnel too? Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, if we're throughout this process, as we are going through camp, those are the things that we're valuing as well. You know, some of the things that uh, certain guys could do and, and then try to make everything look the same, you know. And so from a defense, you can't tell we're getting this particular personnel, it's going to be run or pass or this concept. So those that that is going to be the – that is exactly what we're trying to evaluate right now, see who can do that for us. So we stay out of the unpredictability because we're talented. So that, that's going to be huge for us, stay out of unpredictability. Out of the predictability, rather. What's DJ's strength? DJ Oliver? His strength, yeah, getting downhill, like right? getting downhill right now. Well, he's a downhill runner, getting downhill, and he does a phenomenal job thus far. And now we're not in pass, so you, you can't see it. And defensive guys are not fitting up. So I'm not saying he's breaking tackles, but he's they, they don't necessarily fit up on him like they should sometimes when he getting downhill. That would be his strength is getting downhill right now, and he's. He's doing what they all – I tell them all to do, play like freshmen. They don't know a lot right now. They just know to put the head down. They don't really know what's important or not. They just put the head down. feel like they invest, but they can do it all. And that's a great thing, man. So he's playing like a freshman right now. He's not thinking. He's just running. And he can't really tell me a lot of times what he saw. He just know coach. It was there. I saw it. I hit it. I finished. And he did that today. So we'll keep him doing that. Do you think there's a chance for um, Luke Hamilton to – Absolutely, we got to find a role. That's going. That's something we're evaluating as well. What's the best way to? And again, that talks about uh, the uh, not being predictable. Find different ways to, you know, incorporate him in the game without just putting him in all the time and they knowing what's coming. Obviously, we're gonna have some situations. Short yards, third, and you know, short yards goal line where he's gonna be and they know it's coming. It's gonna be will against will. 
But we need to be able to put him in some situations sometimes where he might be able to do something else other than that. But he got to be able to help us. He did a great job for us this spring. I mean, he he, uh, he embraced contact. He wanted that contact. I don't know if he wanted to catch the ball. He just want to hit somebody. Sometimes them, them tight end guys, you know, they, they won't catch the football where they, they should. But uh, he's a true fullback. I mean, that's that's he wants he wants to do that. And we got to have that mentality in short yard situations. You got to be able to have people outside those five offensive linemen uh, and sometimes the six offensive linemen to be able to do that and create movement for us. But he's an old school, true fullback that wants to engage in contact and move people. And so that attitude carries over to the other guys. The other guys, you know, guys that we, we hope would do it, and we ask them to do it, but and Trey Davis will do that, but hey, that's what he is. Okay, anything else for Coach? All right. I appreciate your time, guys. Thank you.